There's a lot more going on at your local Kinko's these days than just making copies. Happy birthday! Make a wish! Now Sprint is bringing the world's largest video conferencing network to Kinko's all across America. I think you'll like So now, even people thousands of miles apart can be there in the very same room. Only this room comes with a mute button. Rangers, Cherokees, Broncos, Explorers, Pathfinders, Blazers, any pickup or 4 by 4 on-road or off. Boy, do we have a tire for you. The tough LTX light truck series from Michelin. Nick and Fred know to be on top of their game, it takes practice. Now you can improve your game with the legends of sports and win great prizes from Panasonic. For details and rules, pick up USA Today or watch CNN Sports Tonight. Our Saturday setting starts in Division I AA, where Prairie View A&M will play Jackson State in Jackson, Mississippi, staring a new record straight in the face. Prairie View has not won since October of 1989. A Division I record tying 44 losses in a row. And with Jackson State 6-3, the prospects for stopping that streak are not good. The overall record for futility is 50 straight losses set by Division III's McAllister College in the 1970s. Number 15, Syracuse plays at number 24, Boston College. The Orange men are coming off that 27-6 loss to Miami last week and need a win at D.C. to stay in the hunt for one of the bigger bowl games. Boston College, after its 0-2 start, is now 5-2-1, and, and the Eagles need this game with Miami still out there as the season finale. Georgia travels to Auburn, where the nation's longest winning streak will be waiting. The Tigers have won a school record 20 in a row, as everything has gone right in Terry Bowden's two years as head coach. While the opposite is happening for Ray Goff at Georgia, the Bulldogs can boast of quarterback Eric Zier, but little else, and almost certainly must win to keep any bowl hopes alive. And we can tell you that Auburn coach Terry Bowden will be with us in College Coaches Corner tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time, but he's going to need to keep his winning streak alive against Georgia tonight. Will he be able to do it? What yeah, happens? I would think he would, Paul, but Georgia's had two weeks to prepare for this game. They've put in a lot of new wrinkles, and that's important. Eric Zier, well, Eric Zier, we've heard about him all year. He's capable of keeping Georgia close. He's got to have a good game, and they've got to control Auburn's running game. Plus, I have to believe, more importantly, Auburn's got to be saving a little something for some school next week called the University of Alabama, and that's why George would be plus 12, my favorite pick today. We'll wish you good luck on that one, Danny. <laughs> Thank you. I may need <laughs> Speaking it. Speaking <laughs> of some school, a certain analyst alma mater, Alabama gets its final pre-Auburn test today in Starkville. The Crimson Tide is 9-0, but ranked number 6 in the coalition poll, and will run into a Mississippi State team thinking upset. And if that brings a collective yawn from Tuscaloosa, so be it. The Bulldogs have never won this game in Starkville. They've only won one of the last 36 meetings between the two, but that was against an undefeated and top-ranked Bama team in Jackson, Mississippi in 1980. The final of that one, 6-3. to three. And the man wearing a bullseye for the Alabama defense today is going to be Mississippi State quarterback Derek Tate. Well, Paul, this is a very good quarterback. Once he gets out of the pocket, that's when he's most dangerous. He can run the ball. He's got a very good, strong arm, as you can see. But the problem is he can't read defenses, not because he's not good. It's because he's inexperienced. It's only his first year as a starter, and that's a problem the State has had, him reading defenses. State's going to run the ball right at Alabama today off tackle. And considering what Alabama does, this is one of the tougher defenses to get a read on when they're out there under center. Sure. But Alabama quarterback Jay Barker, he became the first quarterback in school history to go over the 5,000 career yard passing mark last week. He needs a big game today, doesn't he? Yes, he's only thrown one interception the whole year. He's 32-1-1 one one as a starter. Why he's not mentioned as a Heisman candidate, I have no idea. May certainly not because of me. <laughs> Georgia, what they Georgia tried to do against Alabama, they tried to shut down Sherman Williams and force Barker to pass. And that's what Mississippi State, they'll adopt the Georgia game plan. So certainly the Bulldogs are thinking upset in this game. Certainly Alabama's thinking a little bit about Auburn, as you, you alluded to earlier. Who wins this game and why? Well, I think Auburn's thinking more about Alabama <laughs> because all, Alabama's got your hands full. I like Alabama, but I would not lay those points. And look for State to use a lot of shifting in the backfield. They're going to try to confuse Alabama's defense. They will shift in the backfield every play almost on offense. All right. 
Well, we've got a report from a Tulsa newspaper which says University of Oklahoma officials are trying to negotiate a settlement with head coach Gary Gibbs so he will resign before President-elect David Boren takes office on Thursday. Sources close to Boren are quoted as saying the former senator wants Gibbs gone before his school administration starts so his first action does not become an ugly firing. Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State today before its annual season finale against top-ranked Nebraska, which comes in two weeks. And Danny, uh, this is not a surprise to you. No, as we reported last week, I said that Gary Gibbs, a good coach, but he would be fired because he didn't beat Colorado, Nebraska, and Texas. I honestly thought they'd wait until after the Nebraska game, maybe a week before, but they've already, it's no secret, they've already talked to several candidates, and we'll mention those on later shows, candidates who are presently coaching. All right. As we look ahead to that, we've got something closer to home, and that is the Dog of the Week and Danny's Notre Dame-Florida State pick. They come after you ponder a question. Michelin asks, who owns the NCAA record for most rushing yards in a season? The answer in a moment. trust in the wet? A tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The all-season MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Oh, well, I'm the kind of light that likes to bend around. You can point me left or right or hang me upside down, but I'm not the kind of light you have to hang on to just use me when you need three hands but you've got only two because i'm the snake light they call me the snake light it's the hands-free flexible flashlight new from black and decker yeah we are the snake lights from black and decker we get around 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 remember when sprint's fiber optic network just meant a great phone call that was a pen today you'll find that same sprint clarity and high-speed data transmission Worldwide video conferencing, voice activated calling. That was a pen. And wireless communications. Only one company lets you be there with all this technology right now. So, in case you were wondering, are you a pin, first of all? Yes, that was a pin. Michelin asks who owns the NCAA record for most rushing yards in a season? The answer, Barry Sanders, with 2,628 yards in 1988. Now to the rough stuff. This week, WAC co-leader Colorado State takes on 1-8 and eight Arkansas State. Ram coach Sonny Lubick said, I guess we'll probably be favored. Arkansas State coach John Bobo said he told his team if they don't play well, this could be one of those 60 to nothing jobbers. We say they're both right. We also now turn our attention back to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, where Notre Dame and Florida State are just moments away from kicking things off. It's going to be hot, 80 degrees and up, sunny. What happens? I need to get hot. <laughs> First of all, Notre Dame, is, uh, they've had two weeks to prepare for this game. This is truly, does may not matter, but it's the healthiest they've been all season, Paul. It's got to mean something. Uh, I think Lou Holtz has never been a double-digit underdog at Notre Dame. That shows quite a lot. And remember that first year when he was five and six? One time they were a nine-and-a-half pointer dog last year, and I got lucky and picked them, and they upset Michigan. I'm going to take Notre Dame in the 12-and-a-half points. I think Ron Paulus will keep it close. The key is the offensive line. Uh, Florida State has tremendous speed advantage here, but I think the offensive line can hold their own, not like they did last year, but I think they can keep it close. You also said the two weeks. We'll see how it turns out. And I'll look for an upset if it's close in the fourth quarter within seven points. If not, tough break. We'll see. We've got more college football tomorrow morning here on CNN when we'll see what kind of changes the new USA Today CNN Coaches Poll has for us and speak with Auburn's Terry Bowden. College Coaches Corner kicks off at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Then the pro game most everyone's been waiting for. The Cowboys and 49ers, Bob Lorenz will be here. James Lofton will be in Candlestick. NFL Preview will have it covered at 11.30 Eastern Time. And the headline news sports ticker will have all the scores today, tonight, and tomorrow. Our thanks to Lou Holtz and Bobby Bowden for being with us. Now for Danny Sheridan and everyone who's worked to bring you College Football Preview, I'm Paul Crane. We thank you for watching. Enjoy your games as the news continues on CNN. This has been a presentation of CNN Sports.
Just ahead on Newsday Saturday, we'll look back at the life of an Olympic champion who broke records in track and field, and today news of her death is breaking hearts nationwide. Also, although President Clinton is now abroad, he's still haunted by GOP midterm election victories. It's all coming up next. after they tore down that wall, Eastern Europeans are wondering if life is worth living a revolution. CNN presents Sunday. You asked for it, and we spent the summer building it for you. An exclusive microwave link connecting Western Iowa, Omaha, and Lincoln. Newswatch 7 Live link. Now, when news breaks throughout our area, only Newswatch 7 can take you there live through an exclusive partnership with Central Iowa's news leader, KCCI-TV in Des Moines. Newswatch 7 Live link. When other stations are heading to the scene, Newswatch 7 is already there. Newswatch 7 Live link. Only on Newswatch 7. The final all-out clear-out of 94 inventory is now at Stan Olson Lincoln Mercury Mazda. Stan Olson, the area's largest mega dealer, has your ticket to big savings. Mercury Tracer and Topaz from $89.88. 94 Cougars from $14,981. Villagers discounted up to $5,500. Mazda 626 from $12,584. And $83.92 puts you in a Mazda pickup. These are the final days of clearance prices. Stan Olson Lincoln Mercury Mazda at the West Roads. Have you ever dreamed of living in space? Did you ever think about being an astronaut? Cox Cable and the Discovery Channel want to send you to do just that at Space Camp in Florida. Just pick up your entry form at Rod Cush's Furniture and draw what you think a space station of the future will look like. Five kids ages 7 to 11 will win a Discovery Space Shuttle video. One lucky winner will go to Space Camp in Titusville, Florida and do all the cool things astronauts do. Get to Rod Cush's Furniture at 72nd and L and explore new worlds with the Discovery Channel and Cox Cable. This season, 20th Century Fox, Richard Attenborough, Elizabeth Perkins, Dylan McDermott, and Mrs. Dotfire's Mara Wilson.